back to Woodcrafting Place. Ray Ruth in here. So we've got a great project for you today. So let's grab our coffee and get to it. <laughs> Okay, so today we're going to do a fun little project. Decided to do what I call a little skill building project. And do it on the lathe. We haven't done much with the lathe yet, so I figured we'd give that a try. Um, making these, which are a really good time. They're quick, small, here's another one. Colorful, and the great thing, like I said, is they're quick. Within 30 minutes, as I was getting ready to do the project, I was realized that normally when I make something like this, I'd hold it on the lathe using a collet. You can see here, which has a special little setup that goes in the lathe. And most guys don't have collets, at least I actually didn't until early on. And prior to my collet, I used a scroll chuck. But again, this is something that a lot of people don't have. So I decide what we're going to do today to conquer that challenge is I'm going to show you how to make a collet from a piece of dowel. This is a standard maple dowel that you can get at the big box store. But one thing that uh, you may or may not have, which I'm going to highly recommend, if you don't, go out and get one. And that is this little drill holder for the lathe. It has a Morse taper, just like your lathe does. This is going to be indispensable for when you do a lot of projects. Whenever you have to drill something on the lathe, or you want to drill something dead nuts, right on center, the lathe is the place to do Make that. sure you know, though, when you're buying this, which size Morse taper your lathe has. If you have a small mini lathe, like Harbor Freight or something, you might have a number one Morse taper. Most of the bigger lathes, wood lathes, have a number two Morse taper, but make sure you check which your size taper is here so you know what your drill chuck's got to be. And we're going to be making a number two Morse taper today for the collet. This is everything else. We have a plan, and as you remember from our Woodworking 101 video, we always make a plan. I introduce you to a couple tools critical for this party operation. Simple plastic fixture that I use for identifying the center of any round item. You got nice and perfect center. Works great. So that's one. When we're on the lathe, the basic items that you're going to need, and pretty much every lathe comes with these. This is a drive center to spur. Has four little prongs on it in a live center, and again, a drill chuck. Absolutely critical. That's the biggest one you can get. If you can get a three-quarter, great. If not, half-inch, minimum. The smallest one you want to get is a half-inch diameter drill chuck. Okay, beyond that, here are the tools we're going to work with today. First thing we're going to be working with is a parting tool. This is for making slots. Gives us the right size. Use it for a bunch of other items. Well, I'm going to introduce you to the skew. Great tool. I do a lot of my turning, sizing, and finishing with a skew. I can do some projects with this and nothing more. And last, the detail. I'll show you how to use this today, especially on the top. This is a super useful tool. It's great for making rounded edges, um, and you'll see that too. So, Okay, so we've moved over to the lathe. Quick note on safety before we get started. I will always wear my face shield. You can see that here. Or and or my safety glasses. And you notice I have my dust collection right here. And I also, as I mentioned in my woodworking 101 the sanding section, will wear a dust mask when I'm sanding, especially. So Take all those precautions, you'll enjoy your woodworking a lot more. So, what we're going to do to start off with, we're going to position the collet piece on the lathe. See that there? So, 
we're at 750. We'll just make it nice and round. We're going to start, my favorite thing to do is starting with a skew. Literally just on top of the part. And I plane it nice. Next, we're going to consult our plan. Now, this diameter right here, and this diameter, 588 and 705, those are critical. We want to make sure that those are just right. So we're going to dial those in. This item, right here. Caliper. If you don't have one of these in your shop, get one. They're super useful. So I know the first mark is the 588, which is right at the end. And the next mark, 2 and 7 sixteenths. So I measure from this end. So make that mark complete. No, 588 is the first diameter we need to establish. So what I would do is I will put the caliper at 588. It's 590, which is okay. So, next tool. Parting tool. This is basically the way you do any spindle when you're sizing it. Lock that down. I thought it had a little vibration. And gently check. Now that we've got our key diameters established, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of the detail gouge. This is for use for spindles only. This is not used for bowls. This is at approximately a 45-ish. Could probably drop this down a little more. In and back so it is riding on this area of the tool. Like that. So from there I'm going to go, go over to a skew using it basically like it, what's called a scraper, a negative scraper this angle pointing down will do a nice clean job scraping and because it's round it would be useful to give me a nice straight edge. Sanding on the lathe, always move the tool rest out of the way. You might use it for an armrest but you don't want it close in case this grabs the sandpaper and pulls your hand down in. So now this should fit snugly into here. There we go. Pop that out. Yes. Now what I'll do is
I will push this into snug a little bit so that it spins, spins in. So you see that's perfectly beautiful centered. That's exactly what I want. So we're making a nice dent in here so that this will always ride center on the Morse taper. Now we're going to push that in tight so it fits. Now I'm going to, before I drill, just because I like things to spin smooth and even, I am going to, actually I'm going to use this one, just going to touch just to scrape the end square. Absolutely necessary, probably not. There. Alright, good to go. Now remember that drill chuck I told you absolutely need to have? Well you need to have it. Okay, so we need to drill the collet so we will securely hold on to the, the top when we make it. Once you've made this, it will be useful for you for many, many uses. So we're drilling a half inch hole. And I have a general rule. If I'm drilling a half inch, I need to go an inch deep to give myself enough room so that this, you'll see the sections of the collet have plenty of room to flex, but I do not want to be all the way down to this area, because if I am, this area gets really thin. And then I just loosen that up. You notice how nice and smooth and centered that drill is. The lathe is the best tool for drilling anything on center. Now I'm going to go to my bandsaw. There. And what I do next is I will just cut for both cameras. I'll cut next right here. Voila, we're done with the collar. I added a little clamp there. And the whole idea for the clamp is simply to hold on to that in that fashion. All right, so it's time to get to the, the fun project which we started with, the whole purpose for making the collet. I'm going to make a little top. So as you see when I make my blanks, I make the blanks with a round top piece. What I do is a, a simple hole saw and I drill the blank and end up with a quarter inch hole in the middle. Enlarge that to a half inch and then glue a half inch dowel around it inside of it. Excuse me. And that gives me exactly what I need to make my top. So we're back to live center. It's really nice to help support DYs. That clamp has a little metal piece hanging off of it, and the screw, and there's some sharp edges. Gotta stay alert now. You gotta be careful, pay attention. That will clip you and it will hurt. I promise you it will take a piece of skin with it. So 
Just watch your hands, watch where you're going, and you'll be fine. The way you're producing your top, this part over here close to the uh, to the tailstock is going to be the part you hold with your fingers, and the bottom point of the top is over there. So you're going to work, your curve is going to go that way. And then eventually you'll part it that way, and it'll just fall off. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to true it up. Right now it's running kind of sloppy. Detail gouge is one of the great tools for that, for this. Gently touching. You can always take more. If it digs in and gouges and catches. is coming up as I'm rotating. So I'm turning, going forward, and I'm rotating this, this way, and I'm coming up that way. And that gives me a nice smooth curve. If you come off of the bevel and ride just on the point, this will pull it in, you'll grab it, grab it, pull it in, and you're going to chunk out and a small project like that would probably be the end of the project. So. A little trick for a big open space like that. If you make sure that your face is down, okay, you do not want it up, it will catch and dig. So the tool is open like so, with this face out, and it is down. You want it to be below horizontal, like that, below horizontal. You can do this all day long without catching. And this just needs to be touched up a tiny bit with sandpaper at this point. The uh, beauty of doing the embellishing later is it does not require a whole lot of sanding. Okay, so it's embellishing time, and I'm going to give you the key rule to embellishing. You have to follow this rule, it will never come out right. The key rule is, there is no rules. You can do it whatever you want. So, here are the basic tools you're going to use. This gives you a nice pattern, a hair and bone or, or diamond pattern. There's a coarse and a fine. This is, gives you a chatter. This tool will actually bounce up and down as it chews into the wood. And then this little item takes little bites into it as it spins. I bought a, um, a Sorby cutter and made my own little holder here. What I found as I've started to play with is as you're embellishing the the top. You want to put defining lines between each section of embellishment. So what I mean by that is, so you're going to do a diamond pattern. Let's get my pencil here. You're going to do three colors here. You're going to do one color here. You're going to do a color in here, and a color out here. Whatever you feel like it. So between each section, use. I use a diamond point tool 
to make a little line. And you'll see how I do that. So that way, the pattern has a nice defined start and end. It looks cleaner that way. I'll put something on the outside as well. Pick a couple basic colors. I think we'll take our super um, fancy Sharpie pens. Nothing special. These are just standard Sharpies. So I'm putting the tailstock back farther, as far as I can get it, just so it's out of the way more. This is so it has good support, it's tight, it's tight. So I'm literally just going to make a couple marks. I hold the two upside down. And I'm burnishing, essentially, the grooves in. So you might hear a loud noise. It's yeah, it's not in green. Diamond pattern. Whatever you know what to do. On the other side, just for the fun of it, I'm going to do all with this tool. And steady. I like red for the outside. Okay, we've embellished, we've turned the top, the top is ready to finish up. To finish all of my tops, beeswax basically is what I use. It's obviously food safe. You literally just take the beeswax. Oh, and by the way, we still have the tailstock in place to support it for this process. So I literally just rub it on, let the heat build up. All right. Here's the rule. Rags never come in contact directly with a lathe, especially when spinning at this rate. Paper towel. If the lathe should grab it and yank it, it'll tear and it will not pull your arm with it. So we apply a friction and the beeswax melts from the friction. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to round off this the back end. I'm just cleaning up Do this so you have a nice centered point. Now you hold on to the top of your hand like I'm doing. And it comes free. 
there you have it. So that's it. We're all done with the top. As a bonus, we got to make this nifty collet for holding. Today, the one we made was for a half inch. So anything that's a half inch dowel, you now can pop this into your lathe. And just like so, tighten this clamp up and you're good to go. And of course you can make these for various sizes be very convenient, quarter inch, three quarters of inch, very useful. And the other thing we learned today was how to do one of these. Nifty little project, like I said, skill builder. You learn how to use a gouge to do curves. Again, turning and lifting it to do the curve. parting tool to give you depths. In this case it was we got this depth then we had that depth and the skew which we learned for planing. Here's a good view. This top point has to be above then you can just plane as it spins. You learned something? You enjoyed what was in the content of the video? like and subscribe hope to see you soon like i said subscribe and you'll get notified of all the different videos we do here in the shop there'll be lots more so hope to see you soon time to get some more coffee too oh that's cold <laughs>